Hello and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe 2021. I am your messenger of the Word of God, Shenandoah Briscoe, and today we're going to be covering Judges 4 through 6 and Luke 4, 31 through 44. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice and articulation so that the reading of your word will be a blessing to you and for all of those who have tuned in from all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. And they all said, Amen. Deborah, Judges 4 Again the Israelites done evil in the eyes of the Lord, now that Ehud was dead. And so the Lord sold them into the hands of Jobin, king of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor, Sisur. The commander of his armies was based in Harashabeth Hagagin, because he had nine hundred chariots filled with iron and had cruelly oppressed the Israelites for twenty years. They cried out to the Lord for help. Now Deborah, a prophet, the wife of Lepidiodoth, was leading, was leading Israel at the time. Now she co held court under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites went up to her to have their disputes decided. Now she set the, sent the Barak, son of Abnamon, from Kadesh in Tali, and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go take with you ten thousand men of Natali and Zebulun, and lead them up to Mount Tabor. I will lead Sierra, the commander of the Jobin's army, with his chariots and his troops to the Keshon River, and give him into your hands. Barak said to her, If you go with me, I will go. But if you do not go with me, I won't go. Certainly I will go with you, said Deborah, but because of the course you are taking, the honor will not be yours, for the Lord will deliver Sierra into the hands of a woman. So Deborah went with Barak to Kadesh. Then Barak summoned Zebulun and Nephali, and ten thousand men went up under his command. Deborah also went up with him. Now Heber the Canaanite had left the other Canaanites, the descendants of Hobab, Moses' brother-in-law, and pitched his tents by the great tree in Zenonim near Kadesh. When they told Zerah that Barak son of uh, Abaddon had gone up to Mount Tabor, Sarah summoned from Herosheth Hegion to the Kadesh River all his men and his nine hundred chariots filled with iron. Then Deborah said to Barak, Go this, go, this is the day the Lord has given Sarara into your hands. He, has not the Lord God gone ahead of you? So Barak went down Mount Tabor with ten thousand men following him. At Barak's advice, the Lord routed Sarah and all his chariots and armies by the sword, and Sierra got down from his chariot and fled on foot. Barak pursued the chariots and army as far as Heshereth Hegerinium, and all Sierra's troops fell by the sword. Not a man was left. Sereras, meanwhile, fled on foot to the tent of Jeel the wife of Heber the Canaanite, 
because there was an alliance between Jebin, king of Hazar, and the family of Herbier, the Canaanite. Or Kenite, sorry. Jael went out to meet Sarir and said to him, Come, my lord, come right in. Don't be afraid. So he entered her tent, and she covered him with a blanket. I am thirsty, he said. Please give me some water. She opened a skin of milk, gave him a drink, and covered him up. Stand in the doorway of the tent, he told her. If someone comes by and asks you, is anyone in there, say no. But Jalheber's wife picked up a tent peg and a hammer and went quick quietly to him while he lay fast asleep, exhausted. So she drove the peg through his temples into the ground, and he died. Just then, Barak came by in pursuit of Saras, and Javiel went out to meet him. Come, she said, I will show you the man you are looking for. So he went in with her, and there lay Sisera with the tent peg through his temple dead. On that day God subdued Jopim, king of Canaan, before the Israelites, and the hand of the Israelites passed harder and harder against Jobin, king of Canaan, until they destroyed him. The Song of Deborah Judges 5 On that day Deborah and Barak, son of Adonim, sang this song. When the prince is in Israel, take the lead. When the people are willing, offer themselves. Praise the Lord. Hear this, you kings. Listen, you rulers. I, even I, I will sing to the Lord. I will praise the Lord, the God of Israel, in song. When you, Lord, went out from Sire, when you marched from the land of Edom, the earth shook, the heavens poured, the clouds poured down water, the mountains quaked before the Lord, the one of Sinai before the Lord, the God of Israel. In the days of Shemag, son of Anath, in the days of Jeol, the highways were abandoned. Travelers took to winding paths. Villagers in Israel would not fight. They held back until I Deborah arose until I arose a mother in Israel. God's chosen new leader, when war comes to the city gates, but not a shield or a spear was seen among forty thousand in Israel. My heart is with, will with Israel's princess. With the willing volunteers among the people, praise the Lord. You who ride on white donkeys, sitting on your sable blankets, and you who walk along the road, consider the voice of the singers at the watering places. They recite the victories of the Lord, the victories of his villages in Israel. Then the people of the Lord went down to the city gates. Wake up, wake up, Deborah. Wake up, wake up, break out in song. Arise for act. Take captive your captives, son of Abban. The remnant of the nobles come down, the people of the Lord come down to me against the mighty. 
Some come from Ephraim, whose roots were in Amalek. Benjamin was with the people who followed you. From Mecca, captains came down. From Zebulun, those who bear the commander's staffs. The princes of Israqa were with Deborah. Yes, Israq was with Brad. Sent under his command into the valley in the districts of Rivan. There was much searching of heart. Why did they stay among the sheep's pen? To hear the whistling of the flocks. Did the districts of Reuben, there was much searching of heart. Gilead stayed by beyond the Jordan. And Dan, why did they linger by the ships? Asher remained on the coast and stayed in his cove. The people of Zebulun risked their very lives. So did Nephetel on the terraced fields. Kings come, they fought. The kings of Canaan fought at Trenchurch by the waters of Megiddo. They took no plunder or silver. From the heavens the stars were fought. From their courses they fought against the era. The river Kishon swept them away. The age-old river, the river Kishon. March on, my soul, be strong. Then thundered the horses' hooves. Galloping, galloping, go his mighty steeds. Curses, more Said the angels of the Lord, Cursed its people bitterly, Because they did not come to help out the Lord, To help the Lord against the mighty. Most blessed of women be Jael, The wife of Heber the Canaanite, The Canaanite, most blessed of tent-dwelling women. He asked for water, and she gave him milk. In bowel fit for nobles, she brought him curdled milk. Her hand reached for the tent peg, her right hand for the workman's hammer. She struck Sirs, Sirs, and she crushed his head. She shattered and pierced his temple, and now he's dead. At her feet he sank, he fell there, he lay. At her feet he sank, he fell. Where she sank, there he fell dead. Through the window peered Caesar's mother. Behind the lattice she cried out, Why is his chariot so long in coming? Why is the clatter of his chariot delayed? The wisest of her ladies answered her, Indeed she keeps saying to herself, Are they not finding and dividing their spoil? A woman or two uh, for each man. Colorful garments as plunder for Sierra. Colorful garments embroidered. Highly embroidered garments for my neck. All this is plunder. So may all your enemies perish, Lord. But may all who love you be like the sun. When it rises in its stream, then the land had peace forty years. Gideon, Judges 6. The Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord and 
for seven years he gave them into the hands of the Midianites because the power of Midian was so oppressive the Israelites prepared shelters for themselves in mountain cliffs caves and strongholds wherever the Israelites planted their crops the Midianites Amalek and other eastern people invaded the country they camped on the land and ruined the crops all the way to Gaza and did not spare a living thing for Israel neither sheep nor cattle nor donkeys they came up with their livestock in their tents like swarms of locusts it was impossible to count them on their camels they invaded the land to ravage it Midian so impoverished the Israelites that they cried out to the Lord for help when the Israelites cried out to the Lord because of Midian he sent them a prophet who said this is what the Lord the God of Israel says I brought you up out of Egypt out of the land of slavery I rescued you from the hand of the Egyptians. I delivered you from the hand of all your oppressors. I drove them out before you and gave you their land. I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not worship the gods of the Ammonites, in whose land you live, but you have not listened to me. The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Ophrah that belonged to jo Joash at the Abizarzerach, where his son Gibeon had thrashing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. Then the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, and he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied, but is the Lord with us, and why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of Midian. The Lord turned to him and said, Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian, in Midian's hands. I am not sending you. And pardon me, my Lord. Go to sleep. Pardon me, my lord. Gideon replied, But how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest of Manash, and I am the least in my family. The Lord answered, I will be with you, and you will strike down all the Midianites, leaving none alive. Gideon replied, If now I have found favor in your eyes, give me a sign that it is really you talking to me. Please do not go away until I come back and bring my offerings and set it before you. And the Lord said, I will wait until you return. Gideon went inside, prepared a young goat, and from it an apple of flour he made bread without yeast putting the meat in a basket and it and its broth in a pot. He brought them out and offered them to his, him under the oak. The angel of God to, said to him, Take the meat and the unleavened bread, place them on this rock, and pour out the broth. And Gideon did so. Then the angel of the Lord touched the meat, and the unleavened bread with the tip of the staff that was in his hand. Fire flared from the rock, consuming the meat and the bread, and the angel of the Lord disappeared. When Gideon realized what ha 
that it was the angel of the Lord, he exclaimed, Alas, sovereign Lord, I have seen the angel of the Lord's face to face. But the Lord said to him, Peace, do not be peace. Do not be afraid. You are not going to die. So Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and called it the Lord is peace. To this day it stands in Ophrah of the Abizrites. That same night the Lord said to him, Take the second bull from your father's herd, the one seven years old. Tear down your father's altar eh, to Beal, and cut down the Asher pole beside it. Then build a proper kind of altar to the Lord your God on top of it that that of this height using the wood of the Asher pole that you cut down offer the second bull as a burnt offering so Gideon took ten of his servants and did as the Lord told him but because he was afraid of his family and the townspeople he did it at night rather than in the daytime. In the morning, when the people of the town got up, there was Bala's altar demolished, with the ash pole beside it cut down, and the second bull sacrificed on the newly built altar. They asked each other, Who did this? And when they carefully investigated, they were told, Gideon, son of Joash, did it. Well, then the people of the town demanded on, of Josh, Josh, bring out your son. He must die because he has broken down Bala's, Bala's altar and cut down the Asher pole beside it. But Josh replied to the hostile crowd around him, Are you going to plead Bala's cause? Are you trying to save him? Whoever fights for him shall be put to death by morning. If Bala really is a god, he can defend himself when someone breaks down his altar. So, because Gideon broke down Bala's altar, they gave him the name Jerub Baal that day, saying, Let Baal contain, let Baal contend with him. Now, all the Mennonites, Amalekites, and other eastern people joined forces and crossed over the Jordan and camped in the valley of Jezreel. Then the Spirit of the Lord came to Gideon, and he blew a trumpet, summoning the Abizrites to follow him, and he sent messengers throughout Manash, calling to them calling them to arms, and also into Asher, Zebulun, and Nephetai. So the, they too went up to meet them. And Gideon said to God, If you will save Israel by my hand, as you have promised, look, I will place a wood fleece on the thrashing floor. If there is dew only on the fleece and all the ground is dry then I will know that you will save Israel by my hand as you said and uh, that is what happened Gideon rose early the next day and he squeezed the fleece and wrung out the dew a bowl full of water then Gideon said to God do not be angry with me let me make just one more request Allow me one more test with the fleece, but this time make the fleece dry and let the ground be covered with dew. That night God did so. Only the fleece was dry. All the ground was covered with dew. Okay, that was Judges 4 through 6. And now we're going to be turning to Luke 4, 31 through 44. Jesus drives out an impure spirit. 
Luke 4, 31. Then he went down to Capernaum, a town in Galilee, and on the Sabbath he taught the people. They were amazed at his teaching because his words had authority. In the synagogue there was a man possessed by a demon, an impure spirit. He cried out at the top of his voice, Go away! What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, Jesus said sternly. Come out of him. Then the demon threw the man down before them all and came out without injuring him. All the people were amazed and said to each other, What words the, uh, these are? With authority and, and power he gives orders to impure spirits, and they come out. And the news about him spread throughout the, the surrounding area. Jesus heals many. Luke 4, 38. Jesus left the synagogue and went to the home of Simon. Now Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever, and they asked Jesus to help her. So he bent over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. She got up at once and began to wait on them. At sunset, the people brought to Jesus all who had visions, uh, various kinds of sickness, and lying of his hands on each one of them, he healed them. Moreover, demons came out of many people, shouting, You are the Son of God! But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak, because they knew he was the Messiah. At daybreak, Jesus went out to a solitary place, and the people were looking for him, and when they came to where he was, they tried to keep him from leaving them. But he said, I must proclaim the good news to the kingdoms of God, to the other towns also, because that is why I was sent. And he kept on preaching in the synagogues of Judea. Okay, that was Luke 4, 31 through 44, which concludes the Bible with Briscoe 2021 for today. Tomorrow we will be covering Judges 7 through 8 and Luke 5, 1 through 16. Thank you, Father, so very much for your word, because without your word, I could not be your messenger of the word. Thank you. May God give all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen. All right, folks, thank you for turning into the Bible with Briscoe 2021. Once again, uh, I have enjoyed being your messenger of the word of God. And again, as always, Shenandoah Briscoe, <laughs> me, and God, you know, God loves you, and so do I. So come back and see us tomorrow, because, well, we'll be here, and we hope that you are, too.